Today we are turning old bread into new bread. What a lovely day to bake. Moin, my name is Arne, German hobby baker who is living in Luxembourg. In my last video, I've showed you what influence the crust has on the taste of the bread. Today we're going to look at the crumb. Of course it has an influence whether you work with wholemeal or normal flour. However, there's no taste like toasted bread. This takes the complexity to a whole new level. Maybe I've overdone it here a little, so there will be a third video on this topic. So let's get started. This is from Luxembourg with Loaf. The evening before we want to bake, we start by creating our levain. Therefore, we take 80 grams of water as well as 80 grams of flour and then we add around 8 grams of sourdough starter. Then we combine everything by using a spoon. Once the water and the flour are combined, we mark the height with a rubber band so we see the fermentation at the next day. For this recipe we also need some toasted bread and you can prepare that the day before or at the same day. I'm having here 160 grams of old dried bread which I'm placing on some baking sheet and this goes in the oven under the grill. And actually what we want to have, we want to have the um, toasted aromas of that bread introduced into the bread and after one minute on each side it should look a little bit like this. So slightly toasted, you can toast it a little more if you like to have some more deeper intense flavors. This will now cool down for a little bit and then we're going to grind that. So once this has been cooled down, I'm taking here some mixer or grinder or whatever you have in order to make that as small as possible. You don't want to have bigger chunks left because they won't dissolve in the dough. So please try to grind them as much as possible. I haven't been patient here, so that's why I had some little chunks later on after baking still in the bread. And this is what you don't want to have. So grind them as much as possible. I'm also adding 160 grams of water. Um, this will stay now for a little bit and then it's time to prepare our main dough. Therefore I'm having here the levain we have prepared yesterday. Then we have this toasted bread water mix. I'm having 640 grams of flour as well as 600 grams of water. I'm taking a little bit of ice because my mixer will heat up the dough a little much. And then 60 grams of salt. So we start by adding water to a mixer and this will followed by some ice. We leave a little bit water for later and then we add um, the flour as well as the uh, toasted bread and then the sourdough will also go in as well. Once everything is in the mixer, we can start the mixer at low speed. After 10 minutes, the toasted bread should be incorporated into the dough. And sometimes when the dough sticks to the bottom of your mixer, take a dough scraper and try to unstick it. My mixer is quite big, that's why sometimes when I'm using um, too much water already or um, yeah, for some dose I have to unstick it. Then it's time to add the salt as well. And then we go maximum speed and also add uh, the last bits of the remaining water. Go little by little, not everything at the same time. And after another five minutes, the dough should look like this. And now it's time to do a window pane test to check if the gluten development is good enough. And as you can see here, it looks quite promising. You also see the bigger chunks of my toasted bread. That's why I said, please grind them as much as possible. This goes now into a greased plastic container and it will rest for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it's time for a first set of coil folds. Therefore, I wet my hands and then pull the dough up and fold it over. And then I rotate the box and do the same again. 
and then another time rotate the box this time 90 degrees and do it like this then cover the box and let it rest for another 30 minutes then we do a second set of coil folds so pull the dough up fold it over rotate the box and do the same again and you already see the dough stays in its shape so it has already developed quite a lot of gluten after another 30 minutes the third set of coil folds will take place so wet in your hands and do the same thing again and this will now stay for another 30 minutes and then it's time for a fourth set And then the same process again. We wet in our hands, pull the dough up and fold it over. And then rotate the box and do the same thing again. And then it's time for the dough to relax and ferment for about four to six hours. After that time, you should some signs of fermentation. The dough should have maybe not doubled, but already grow in uh, height. We dust our countertop and then we dump the dough onto it. Now it's time for doing the pre-shaping. And therefore I also put some flour on top of the dough and then I divide it into two portions. Once this has been done, I'm taking my dough scraper and I'm forming a round dough ball. We do the same with the other dough as well. And you see it keeps its shape quite nicely. That's a good sign. We have developed a lot of um, gluten. And after 20 minutes, it's time to do the final shaping. Therefore, first of all, I dust my Benetons with some flour. And then I also like put some flour on top of my dough balls. This height will later go into the Benetton. And then I'm taking my dough scraper and I'm pulling the dough up into my hands. And then what I'm doing is I just fold it together like this. I rotate that and fold it together, uh, together again. And this goes directly in my Benetton. This is the easiest shaping technique I found on the internet and it's so good. I have done that also with my last bread. I'm linking the video in the upper right corner. Then I'm folding the second dough ball together as the first and this also goes into the Benetton. You can give the dough some extra tension by stitching the edges together like this. As we're having here a quite high hydration, that makes totally sense, but I'm also like doing that on all of my loaves usually. I'm sprinkling now some flour on top of the bread because I'm wrapping it with some plastic foil and in order to not let it stick, um, this will help. This now goes into the fridge overnight. At the next day, it's time to um, bring the loaves onto some parchment paper. I'm using here the same sliding technique that you have seen in my previous videos. And then I'm going to score the doughs. I'm using here some um, 45 degree angle that gives you the best results later on a really open crumb and um, yeah this knife isn't really sharp so i had to score them twice and then i'm transferring the dose into my oven I preheated the oven to 250 degrees Celsius, that's 482 degrees Fahrenheit and I will bake them with steam at this temperature for 10 minutes. I have here a baking sheet on bottom of my oven and I fill some water in it. This will create enough steam and then after 10 minutes it's time to remove 
um, my upper pizza steel. You've seen that already in my previous video and I'm also removing the baking sheet on the bottom. And this will now bake 35 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius. That's 446 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at the result. They look really incredible. The sound is quite nice. And now it's time to let them cool a little bit. So after two hours of waiting time, I decided to cut the bread in order to have a look inside. Oh my God, that looks really nice. What a lovely open crumb. And here are some more beautiful view on the bread. You see the blisters because of the long fermentation. The ear is not that big because of the high hydration, but the crumb looks really nice and the bread is quite juicy. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have to admit, I made a slightly mistake with the amount of water and that's why it was a little bit difficult to handle. I would also reduce the amount of old bread a little. 20% is too intense. Also, when mixing the toasted bread, it's easier to soak the bread beforehand so you don't have any chunks in the bread afterwards. The bread itself smells really interesting. The light roasted aromas remind a sense of coffee on the outside. A wide mix of bread aromas and a slight sweetness on the inside. The high water content keeps the bread fresh for a long time. If you want to support me and my channel, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next videos. Thanks. Have a great day, Eddie, and goodbye. Oh,